Uh, so firstly, thank you again for joining this session. My name is Bish Das. Uh, I am EIB's uh, NAS coordinator based in Nairobi. Uh, so just to uh, put the NAS engagement in context, as many of you know, Excellence in Breeding has five primary uh, platforms um, that are dealing with individual components of the breeding pipeline. Um, so the first module focuses on product design and program management. Uh, module two, focusing on optimizing breeding schemes. Uh, module three, four, and five are service uh, providers, genotyping, phenotyping, and, and bioinformatics. Uh, and the NAS uh, linkage um, uh, team is really uh, providing a, a linkage between national programs and the five modules. So we provide a, a, a linkage uh, between the five modules to support uh, particular needs that national programs have identified in, in each of those areas of expertise. Uh, and where possible, we work hands-on with national programs directly to support them in their modernization efforts. Uh, so in terms of uh, what our team looks like at the moment, so as I said, my name is Bish Das. I'm the Global NAS Coordinator. I'm based in Nairobi. Uh, Sanjay Katiar uh, is the Breeding Support Specialist supporting national programs in Asia. He's based at the ICRISAT campus in Hyderabad. Uh, Lenin Muzundire uh, is the Breeding Optimization Specialist for Africa. So he supports uh, national breeding programs and he is based in Nairobi. Um, we also have a consultant, uh, Ted Kerry, uh, based in Ghana. Uh, he is our um, uh, consultant for West Africa and RTB crops. He worked uh, at SIP for over 20 years uh, and has vast experience in, in West Africa. And he's based in the region there. Uh, and Manilal Williams is supporting national programs to define their genotyping demand. Uh, and develop marker-assisted uh, breeding uh, strategies. Uh, so he comes again from industry, many years in Monsanto, uh, um, what is now Bayer, uh, Corteva Pioneer, and previously he worked in the CGIR as well, and he's based in uh, Canada. So in terms of our engagement with uh, national programs, we're really working with national programs in two main areas. So the first is uh, we're supporting national programs um, uh, to modernize per se. Um, so we, uh, we work with an individual uh, plant breeding program, uh, try and identify what are the gaps in the program and then provide hands-on support uh, to that national breeding program to address those gaps. So this is quite similar to what Excellence in Breeding is doing with many CGIR breeding programs. And our vision in that space is really to see national breeding programs adopting modern practices and running continuous uh, breeding pipelines. Uh, so one of the biggest challenges, as many of you know, with national programs is that the pipelines are not continuous or full. They start, then they stop, uh, and, and they're really uh, structured in a very ad hoc uh, manner. Uh, the second area where we're focusing is trying to promote more effective CGIR NAS breeding networks. Um, so really trying to um, imagine what the whole breeding pipeline looks like from pre-breeding, population improvement, down to the seed systems, and then clearly defining what are the roles and responsibilities of the CGIR and NARS in this entire uh, breeding network. And I'll go into some of the detail for both of these uh, in the next few slides. Uh, so firstly, focusing on the modernization of the national breeding programs uh, per se, uh, these are the stages of engagement we have. Uh, we've been working closely now with about eight or nine uh, national programs in Africa. Um, so we start engagement with a particular country and the national program in that country identifies uh, their priority crop breeding programs that uh, would require some support. Uh, Excellence in Breeding then conducts a baseline needs assessment. So we define the current state of the program um, we provide the program with a tier rating so that we can understand uh, at which stage of development the program is. And then we work with the national program to develop a customized improvement plan that really addresses critical gaps uh, that they have. Uh, and then uh, we, uh, through technical support and in, uh, in, in many cases also receiving support from the Crop Stand Hunger Initiative, we then work with the national breeding program to implement that plan uh, and uh, address any of the challenges that have been identified as top priorities. 
So uh, you will see here the third step is, is rating of the breeding program and, and I'll just go through the, the tiers that we use to grade uh, national breeding programs. And this is just to document the current state because it's very important to understand where the program is now to plan the next steps because not every program will require um, the same kind of support. So a program, for example, that is rated as a tier four which is primarily a testing program and it's mostly testing material that comes out of CGIR uh, networks and, and then releases them, uh, their requirements will be very different from a mature breeding program, which may be actively developing germplasm uh, and might need a different suit of uh, support. So a mature program might need some support uh, or a mid-stage program might need support in genotyping, uh, data management uh, and so on, where, while a testing program uh, their primary um, uh, um, area of support might be more in terms of phenotyping uh, and operation. So it's very important to understand where the program is so that we can build a customized uh, uh, improvement plan for that program. Um, uh, so as, as I was just saying, I think it's very important to recognize that every national program is, is really at a different stage. And even within uh, a national program, the different crop breeding programs are often at, at very different levels. And we need to appreciate that uh, and spend time with each individual program and, and, and really understand what are the key requirements um, for the program. Uh, and as we do that, we try to align um, uh, as much as we can with the ongoing CGIR project. So most national programs are very closely uh, entwined with the large CGIR projects, Agri Alliance, for example, or the AGG project or Sweet Gains and so on. And our goal really when working with national programs is to complement that existing uh, CGIR support and really provide an, an extra pair of hands uh, where that's possible. We appreciate that the CGIR is the primary source of support for many national programs, uh, but sometimes it's difficult for CGIR scientists to reach all their national uh, program uh, partners. Um, and in that case, we uh, would like to provide an extra pair of hands and support uh, wherever it's required. Uh, so in terms of uh, our engagement in 2020, we've been working now, I think, in about 10 countries in Africa, and, and we've also had some engagement in India. Uh, the countries marked in green are countries that we've already conducted baseline assessments on uh, for various crops. Our focus really has been on rice and maize uh, this year, uh, but we've also had a little bit of engagement with cassava, musa, and sweet potato, particularly in Uganda and um, Ghana. Uh, Mozambique and Nigeria are two countries we'd really like to engage with before the end of the year. So we have about six weeks before the end of the year, and we would like to assess the rice programs in both of those countries and help them to develop uh, modernization uh, plans. Uh, so some other examples of some of the work that's been going on, I'd just like to highlight um, the High Rice Project, um, uh, where Sanjay Katiar, whose, whose photo is, is there, is, is leading engagement with various national programs. Uh, it's a project that's being implemented by Excellence in Breeding with support uh, from uh, the Crops to End Hunger Initiative. Uh, it's a short-term catalytic project. It will end at the end of uh, 2022. But the idea is to rapidly deploy existing tools, services, and methods uh, to seven national rice breeding uh, programs uh, in Africa. So assessments for uh, six of the eight programs have already been done. Improvement plans have been developed and uh, various um, uh, modernization uh, pieces are already underway. So, for example, uh, the platform is already supporting many of these national programs to build product profiles, to start doing QA, QC genotyping uh, and uh, start digitizing some of their operations. Uh, for any of you who will join the afternoon session today, uh, which is in uh, about 10 hours time, there will be a presentation in that meeting from one of the national partners in Ghana, uh, outlining some of the work that's uh, happened in the last year. Uh, another area to highlight where excellence in breeding has, has been supporting various national programs is in the area of costing. And this is being led by Lenin Muzundire, uh, who you can see on the top left. So Lenin is using the uh, breeding program costing tool uh, 
uh, developed by the University of Queensland. And he's working with various maize and rice programs in Asia to operate to uh, um, determine their operational costs. And this is being done for the first time for, for many uh, programs uh, in the national system. Uh, and these costs are now being used to help the national programs to develop their budgets. Uh, they're supporting the national programs to identify high cost centers. Uh, so this is an example from one of the programs that Lenin has been working with, where they've been able to determine their costs for pollinating uh, rows, uh, for testing rows, and so on. Uh, and as the costing is conducted, it, it opens up um, um, a possibility to start making recommendations on how to optimize the breeding program based on cost. Um, so, for example, for this particular program, I, I think it was determined that collecting flowering data was a very high cost item because flowering uh, took place over an extended period of time and the program had to have technicians on various sites uh, for up to a month at a time, which is very expensive. Uh, but after looking at the data, it was uh, determined that uh, flowering data for this program was highly heritable. Uh, and in fact, the program might be better off just collecting that data from uh, one location, which would be uh, much cheaper and just as accurate as collecting it from the five locations um, that it was collecting the data from. Um, by understanding the cost, the programs can make other changes too. Most national programs are operating a pedigree system, uh, but by doing a costing analysis, it becomes quite clear that, you know, for some of the maize programs, for example, switching to DH, uh, for some of the other row crops, switching to single seed descent uh, might be a cheaper and faster way of breeding. So in terms of uh, training and scaling, um, so it's been a very challenging year, obviously, because of COVID. So we haven't been able to run any of the traditional workshops and training sessions that uh, we would usually plan to do. And that's likely to remain the same in 2021. So like every uh, other center and every other project, we're thinking of, you know, we've been using webinars. Uh, we've had a webinar in early October on continuous improvement. We had uh, over 100 national partners joining that session. We will have another one on the 19th of November on genetic gains. Uh, and in January and February or February of next year, we're planning a, a segment on um, a, a, a webinar on market segments and product profiles. Uh, in terms of scaling and, and reaching uh, national programs, um, this is something we're actively thinking about. We do want to work through the existing um, networks and support structures that do exist, particularly the CGIR, of course, the, the various CGIR projects, uh, but also the other regional hubs that are in existence. So um, the West Africa uh, regional hubs that have been established by CORAF, the World Bank has set up various regional hubs in Eastern and Southern Africa, and the Innovation Labs, uh, supported by USAID, are also supporting a variety of uh, regional um, hubs. Uh, and we're also looking at a model of, of training uh, coordinators or specialists within each national institute that we work with, uh, so that they can then extend the training uh, to others within their institution. But we are open to other suggestions uh, on how we can scale um, uh, more effectively with national programs. Uh, so in terms of building more effective um, CG and NAS breeding networks, um, so firstly, you know, what, why do we need uh, these breeding networks? And I think we all acknowledge that breeding takes time and, and breeding pipelines are, are relatively long. So if we start at pre-breeding, get into population improvement, product selection and advancement, uh, and then all the way to seed systems, it's a very long process. And it's quite impossible for one team, either at the CG or NARS, to manage this entire process uh, efficiently and effectively. So different stages of the pipeline, re really diverse skills. So, you know, the teams working on pre-breeding, for example, need a completely different skill set to those working on the early stages uh, of seed systems. So we need to define these networks and we need to define what the roles are uh, for the CGIR, NARS, and, um, you know, in, in cases where they exist, the private sector uh, in this entire uh, breeding network. Uh, and the other reason to um, start thinking more actively about breeding networks is to develop a critical mass and, and, and work at, at a sense of scale. So I've shown two maps here at the bottom. So if we consider maize, for example, often uh, maize in Africa, southern and eastern Africa is considered one large 
uh, agroecology, the mid-elevation maize agroecology and varieties grown in that ecologies um, all the way from Zimbabwe to Ethiopia often do uh, quite well. So if each national breeding program were to establish their own breeding program, it would be quite expensive and they would be duplicating the efforts that every other country in that agroecology is making. So if there was a way to join forces and, and develop more of a network approach and um, share capacity, share germplasm, uh, share trialing uh, locations, for example, uh, move towards a, a model of more centralized uh, services uh, and hopefully have a, a CGIR organization in that uh, region coordinate the network, that would be a much more effective way to develop critical mass and, and scale uh, outputs rather than each uh, national program trying to develop um, high levels of internal uh, capacity individually. So this is a busy slide and I'm not going to go into all the details of it, but essentially this is Excellence in Breeding's vision for how a CGIR NAS network would look like. And we really see the CGIR leading the pre-breeding um, space, uh, trait uh, mining and, and development of donors and introgression of um, important traits in elite backgrounds. The CGIR has a mandate to do that. Uh, they are the custodians of global germplasm banks and they have access to the germplasm and, and the resources. Uh, in terms of population improvement and running uh, elite breeding pipelines, we see that as a joint activity. Uh, both the CGIR and national programs are involved there. Uh, at the moment, the CGIR is, is stronger in that space. Um, they're better resourced and, and they're running much larger pipelines. Uh, but we do see some instances where national programs are running very successful breeding pipelines. Uh, and as I said at the start of my talk, we will continue to support these national breeding programs to modernize. Uh, but where we see the national uh, programs really taking leadership and ownership is slightly more downstream of the pipeline. In the final stage, uh, testing, evaluation, um, variety release, on-farm testing, and and really ensuring that varieties that are coming out of this pipeline fit in the target agroecologies in each individual country. So we feel the national programs in each country have a much better sense of what farmers require, of what the seed systems looks like in, in each individual country, and they really should take the lead in, in that downstream uh, component. Uh, and then the other area where we see national programs really taking the lead is in collecting market intelligence. So Again, through the extension system, the national programs are much closer to the farmers. They have a much better sense of what trends are, are emerging in, in each individual country. They have a much better sense of the policy shifts that are occurring in, in each individual country. So we really want the national programs to um, keep their finger on the pulse, take the lead on collecting that information on a national basis, and then through product profiles, through developing national product profiles and through their participation in um, CGIR coordinated annual uh, advancement and annual review meetings, feed that information back um, to the CGIR uh, breeding pipeline so that the national programs are playing a much more prominent role in, in setting the direction and setting targets uh, for the CGIR and of course their own uh, national breeding programs. Um, so this again is the same schematic and it's slightly, uh, it's broken down into more detail where once again we see the CGIR leading, um, you know, category one breeding donor development, uh, both uh, the CGIR and NARS uh, having a, a role to play in population improvement and the national programs really leading the product evaluation uh, and release um, so in terms of uh, increasing impact, so we really, uh, as, as I mentioned a couple of times, it's, it's very important to define the roles and responsibilities and, and even go as far as determining key uh, performance indicators uh, for the CGIR and national programs for each component that they will be responsible in the breeding uh, pipeline. So if we go back to the schematic, you know, no matter how good the breeding pipeline is, uh, if um, organizations further downstream are not delivering, um, you know, there's going to be no impact on, on farmers field. So we need all components of this pipeline uh, to be delivering and uh, effective. Uh, 
so, uh, so as I as I mentioned earlier, we, we really do see the national programs leading some of those downstream components um, uh, and and leading market intelligence. Uh, and as some of you are aware, there was an editorial that came out in uh, Nature uh, earlier this month where they highlighted this um, exact um, uh, topic of discussion. So uh, they evaluated various papers that were published. Uh, and their conclusion was, you know, in order for smallholder farmers, which, you know, the CGIR and NARS are primarily targeting, in order for them to adopt new approaches, including new varieties, um, uh, the most effective way seems to be when these smallholder farmers are supported uh, by their extension services. So we really want to um, highlight that and, and, and focus in on that and recognize the important role that national programs have to play uh, in providing, in linking with the extension services in, in their individual countries, which will ultimately help uh, the deployment and adoption of um, these crop varieties that you know, everyone is heavily invested in, uh, in developing. Uh, so with that, I would like to uh, close uh, my presentation and I'd like to open it up um, to the group that we have today uh, and also solicit your guidance and, and advice on, you know, how EIB can better serve uh, NARS and build stronger breeding networks uh, and what you may consider to be some of your priorities for engagement with national programs in 2021. Uh, so with that, I'll stop sharing my screen and I will come back into the hop-in session. Thank you. Right, so um, I'm back in the session and if uh, anybody would like to ask a question through video, please make a request and, and Sam will help us to get you onto video. Um, Sam, would you like me just to go through the chat? I see there are a few questions here already. With the, the chat also, Joyce has a request um, to share her video, but I'm not sure if it's to ask a question or or, or not. So, um, Joyce, could you confirm in the chat if you wish to ask a question by video? Uh, okay. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I won't put you on the screen, Joyce. Just say. Okay. So, will Joyce ask the question, Sam, or shall I go through the chat? I'll go through the chat. Go through the chat. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so uh, the first question I see is from Chidozi. Uh, so the cost of operations is an important one. Um, yes, yeah, so I think it's more of a comment. So yeah, we agree totally with you, Chidozi. There's been very little work that's actually been done on costing of operations. And it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very difficult to build realistic budgets and also allocate resources to optimize pipelines without a handle on that. So we're excited to be working with the University of Queensland tool. Um, we've done some work, Lenin has been leading this component and he's worked with some maize programs and rice programs. And, and as you know, Chidozi will be starting with the cassava program in Naro uh, later this month. It's the first RTB crop that we'll be looking at. Um, so we're really excited to do that. And thank you Chidozi and, and thank you Robert and, and others who have been open to that collaboration. Um, the next question is from Kalinga Nire. Uh, do we have any engagement with tree crops? Uh, no, unfortunately we don't, uh, Kalinga Nire. Um, this year we focused really on two crops, uh, maize and rice. Uh, and next year our focus is, is and we'll, next year we'll continue with maize and rice, but we'll try and extend to sorghum and um, a couple of the RTB crops, so probably Musa and, and cassava. Uh, so at the, at the moment, tree crops are a little bit out of, out of scope for us. Uh, and, and if you have any follow-up questions, please do just request to access your video and, and audio, and um, we can then uh, follow, have, have a bit more of a discussion. Um, 
I see, I see a question from uh, Chidozi again. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, Chidozi is asking about the, the CGNAS network scheme uh, and how this can be effectively coordinated so, so the national programs excel in their downstream uh, component, in, in the areas that they are responsible for. Uh, and he highlights the importance of product management. Again, Chidozi couldn't agree more. I think what we need to do is try and determine clearly the roles and responsibilities within each crop network and also within each country. So, you know, the national programs in each country are, have different capacities. So let's make that a next step, identify, you know, what the gaps are. Is the national program, for example, able to maintain basic seed? Are they able to maintain uh, disease-free uh, seed stocks? Uh, and if not, that should then be the focus of the improvement plan for that particular national program. Other national programs might be able to do that. They might be having issues with seed multiplication or, or generating market intelligence. Uh, so then that should then be their customized improvement plan. And um, so, yeah, in brief, I couldn't agree more with you. And um, I think we really need to support national programs to, to fulfill their, their obligations in those downstream components. Um, so the next question is from uh, Aparna. Um, so uh, Aparna is saying that the Global Maize Program of CIMIT has undertaken multiple trainings for, for national programs in Africa uh, under various projects, uh, STMA, AGG, uh, but there is no formal uh, feedback on these trainings, uh, such as documenting some of the changes that national programs have implemented. Um, and then uh, she also highlights training has been provided for development of product profiles. Uh, but these have not been implemented. So how can EIB help? So, uh, yeah, so firstly, I think all the training that the CGIR programs, including Global Maze Program, I, I was part of that program for almost 10 years, uh, are, are very valuable. I, I think the national programs enjoy these trainings. They, they get a lot um, out of them and they should continue. I mean, this form of capacity development is, is very important. What we are suggesting, though, is to take this a step further. So we, you know, the, these are blanket trainings um, that um, uh, are kind of generic um, for everyone to, um, uh, to access. What we would, the direction we would like to move in is to have a little bit more of a customized approach. To, so really trying to understand what the exact need is in each individual national program and then work hands-on with that national program to make that change. Um, so the issue there, of course, is scalability because it doesn't allow us to work with huge numbers of programs. So, you know, if you run a webinar or a training session, you might have a hundred uh, national programs in attendance. Uh, but when you're trying to work one-on-one, -on -one, then obviously the, the capacity to engage with programs is limited. But we, we strongly feel that's the way to go. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of training that's happened over the last couple of decades. And as you've pointed out, you know, adoption and implementation of some of those trainings, whether it's fieldwork, BMS, genotyping, it's, it's still relatively low uh, at many of the partners. So we need to work a little bit more hands-on and, and that's the approach um, that we are taking. Uh, and in terms of EIB's facilitation, so, you know, as you know, Aparna, EIB is partnering with the new AGG project to support NAS capacity development. And uh, I personally feel that's an excellent model. So, you know, we're working together. We're working very closely with CIMIT Global Maze Program. We understand the agenda and the objectives of the AGG project. Where CIMIT, uh, the Global Maze Program, is able to support the national programs, that's great. So... Uh, and where excellence in breeding could complement uh, that support, we are very happy to do so. So we have, uh, as you know, conducted some joint assessments, uh, baseline gap assessments with CIMIT uh, and excellence in breeding for some national programs. We've developed uh, improvement plans for various of the national uh, programs on the AGG project. Areas that CIMIT is able to handle, things like reviewing the crossing list because CIMIT scientists have um, knowledge of the germplasm or providing access to double haploid facilities, CIMIT takes on. 
um, areas where CIMIT scientists are stretched and are unable to uh, reach the national programs, those are areas where excellence in breeding is complementing CIMIT's efforts. So we are working uh, hands-on with individual national programs to help them um, develop product profiles, for example. We're helping them to cost their operations, uh, things like that, which uh, you know is beyond the scope of most CIMIT scientists at the moment. Um, so I see there is a video question from uh, Sankalp. So I'll ask Sankalp, please, to share your video and, and screen and ask your question. So I just put it, so hopefully Sankalp should be, uh, should be with us momentarily. Um, we may show some slight bias or favoritism to people um, submitting video questions. If you do wish to, uh, to skip the queue, that's the way to do it. Um, while we're waiting for Sankarp, I'm also going to let Boni in as well. Yes. Uh, Bisha, thank you for the nice explanation about the collaboration between CGI and NARS. Um, NARS um, are weak, and one of the reasons is of the high turnover of people. You train them, and they disappear again for a higher promotion somewhere else. So I think we have to continue to work with them, and I think that's a good point. But where do you see um, the private sector coming in? Because the private sector is more stable. And I don't want to have competition between the NARS and the private sector, because that can happen. So how do you see, basically, in my opinion, the three partners, CGIR, NARS, and the private sector? Yeah. Yeah, good, good, good questions, Ronnie. Um, so yeah, I mean, firstly, in terms of turnover, I think it is a big problem. Uh, but one of the exciting things we see with most national programs, you know, throughout Africa is we have now a huge influx of young breeders coming in, people who have been trained through various AGRA and, and various initiatives over the last 10 years in, in the three regional breeding centers, Makarere, ACCI and, and Waki. So uh, I think turnover is a concern. Um, and the solution to that, obviously, is having well-structured breeding pipelines, well-documented, um, adopting, you know, digital data management systems, for example. So, you know, when new people come in, they can pick up, access data that, you know, their predecessors have generated. Uh, but I'm personally very optimistic. I, I see a lot of young, energetic uh, breeders coming into the national system now, which I didn't see even 10 years ago when I was in CIMIT. Uh, and that for me is, is a huge uh, encouragement and, and I, I hope they will stay and they seem very motivated and, and eager to work. Um, so in terms of private sector engagement, yes, the private sector is hugely um, important. Uh, in most crops, you know, the, 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 the role of the private sector remains limited. I mean, obviously in maize, uh, perhaps in, in plantain in, in Uganda, Matoke in Uganda, there's a little bit more development. Uh, but we see, you know, where the private sector is active, of course, we would like them to lead that final stage, the seed uh, production, certified seed production and delivery. They're doing it for a profit. They will be far more efficient at doing it. Uh, they are much more effective um, than any of the public institutions. But that's not to say that national programs still won't have a critical role to play. They will still have a very critical role to play in the final stage evaluation of the products, ensuring there is a good fit uh, between the, the products that are coming out of these CG NARS pipelines and, and what farmers in the individual countries require. Um, I think, you know, for some crops it will evolve and, and eventually we will see the private sector very strong and, and kind of taking over perhaps the entire component from breeding, um, you know, release and, and seed systems. But I think that's only going to happen in, in a very few crops. For most of the crops that we're dealing with, um, uh, particularly the self-pollinating and, and clonal crops, they, they will continue to be a very strong uh, public, uh, public element. Okay. Um, over to you, Sam. I don't know if we have anyone on, on the video uh, session. Yeah, I think Sankalp is still trying to... Um trying to connect again, so maybe we'll see a request from him. Um, but let's see, did you, ah, here we go. Hi, Bishai, I'm sorry. I think I had to refresh everything. Sorry for that. Um, 
I get to see you. Uh, just, just real quick, I think um, it's it's very exciting. You know, uh, also heard from Michael earlier and you. Uh, my questions are basically more comments and and also how we can improve the way we work together. I think um, having engaged with NARS pretty intensively in in past you know uh, past you know several you know weeks and and also I mean we had a couple of sessions where we are changing also the way we engage with NARS. Largely uh, supported by Agri, but you know that's that's becoming our main philosophy. So my my question is, I do understand the CGs are at various stages of you know creating these trialing networks or joint testing networks and and creating the modernization together. So the question is, you know, how do we select, um, you know, in which country we grow? So so there are CGs working in. Let's say if you take a big country like India, there might be several CGs operating. We have Ikrisat, Simit, and uh, Iri operating in the same country, and, and to large extent, some of those uh, NARS could be similar. Um, the story could be different in ESA, where you know the NARS, depending on the country's priority crop, could have different choices. Uh, also, um, depending on the growth of NARS, the the crop infrastructure, as you said, could be very different. So I understand these are different considerations, but it's important for us to then align still and use the existing networks, such as we are very strong in South Asia. And also in ESA, we are building up. Um, also, important thing is how do we know where the donor focus is going to be? There are some informations which which we know ESA or Africa in general is going to be the focus. But I saw one of your slide uh, mention a few countries. Um, most of them we are not currently working. Maybe Africa Rice is working, and we will have that you know leverage there through our efforts. But my question to you now is. Um, how do you plan to align these efforts? You know, because um, the efforts you are taking is almost similar to you know the interventions we are suggesting through the joint networks. It involves basically everything. It involves uh, breeding program optimization. It involves joint testing, and and you know, uh, you know all the things we are talking about in genetic gain and so on. So, I just hope you know we have more opportunities to you know uh, inform each other and consult, um, and ideally, if we can all be present together in those countries which are you know a map supported by the product concepts and, and market segmentation work that will drive um, that will drive this uh, you know theme forward for for I don't know what's for the other crops but for rice I think I see um, and for many crops that's going to be the key because you guys are more closer to you know through your day-to-day -day interactions with donor priorities but um, that doesn't mean that the CGs don't have the existing uh, network stage just aligning the message and leveraging each other's strength. So just some thoughts on that. And I know if Michael is there or any anybody, you know, you or, or Michael, I think, just wanted to say a few things about it. Thank you. Okay, okay. thanks, Sankalp. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have a go. And uh, I don't know if Michael's on the session and if you would like to, um, uh, to say something too. Um, uh, but yeah, so in terms of priorities, you know, the crops and hunger um, <clears throat> have identified a number of priority crops and a number of priority regions. Uh, and that's the information that we are using when we try and identify crops and, and, and uh, priority regions. In terms of alignment with the CGIR uh, ongoing projects, that's really important, Sankalp, and we really need to do that. And, and I completely agree with everything you said. This, so much work to be done. There is absolutely no point to start duplicating and, and doing things like that. Uh, so for me, the best model that I have seen within the CG so far is actually the AGG project. So this is a big maze grant that, that is being led by CIMIT and, and IITA. And EIB is actually an official partner in that grant. And we co-lead a component, the primary objective four, uh, which is capacity development at NAS. So so that, you know, just that simple step, you know, we don't require any budgetary support or anything like that, but just that simple step ensures we're at the table when the discussions are happening, when the CIMIT and IITA scientists are talking about which national programs to engage with, excellence in breeding is on the, on the table, and then we start engaging jointly uh, with the national program. So as I said, we, we start with a current state assessment, we do that together with colleagues from CIMIT, IITA, and, and Excellence in Breeding. And then we jointly identify, you know, improvement, modernization plans for the national program. And, and whatever CIMIT is in a capacity to handle, they go ahead and do that. And other areas which CIMIT may not have the bandwidth or IIT may not have the bandwidth to address, uh, then Excellence in Breeding um, 
takes up uh, those responsibilities. So we're really trying to be an extra pair of hands. We're trying to complement um, the efforts that are going on. I, I, I you know, I, I personally worked in the CG before, so I, I do recognize that the closest relationship national programs have and will have in the future is with their CGIR partner institute. So we want to strengthen that relationship. It's a very, very uh, important relationship. But on the other side, having worked at the CGIR before, I also know that CGIR scientists like yourself are incredibly stretched. If we look at the AGG project, they're working with 13 national programs. And it's impossible, I think, for any CIMIT or IETA scientist to go deep dive into each national breeding program and, and really try to provide the hands-on support that, that we are trying to do. So. Um, so, yeah, just to keep that in, in mind. And, uh, but I, I agree with you, Sankalp. It's very important that we try and, and align and um, uh, work together as much as we can. I see Michael's um, on video, so I'll, I'll hand it over to Michael. Yeah, yeah since you, since you uh, yeah, thanks, Bishop. Since Sankalp wondered whether I wanted to also respond, I thought I'd, I'd add. Um, I, I totally agree with everything you said. Thanks for that, Bish. And I'll just add, though, that uh, in addition to a set of hands, um, it's it's about providing a high level overview um, that any one centre isn't able to do. So, for example, if there's a national program that is that is dealing with Erie for rice and with Sim and ITA for maize and maybe for with uh, SIP for potatoes and SIAT for beans, what we don't want is to have a um, for them to have to try and manage a different way of operating and a different way of, of um, how they interact with the CG, which really, I mean, especially under one CG is going to be one organisation. And so in that regard, we can sort of have a, a higher level view and say, this is this is how we're doing, even if we're um, working with Erie uh, in this case to support them, we can say, well, actually, this is how we're already doing it with, with SIP or SIAT. And, and you know, so it's just a, a very minor comment I wanted to add. Okay. I think that helps Thanks. a lot, especially yeah, in this context. So thank, I thank you both, um, Bish and Michael. Okay. And, and thank you, Sankal, for that very uh, relevant question. Thanks very much. Um, so uh, before we close the session, just like to um, uh, acknowledge John uh, uh, Rubio. He's made a comment as well. Uh, and he's saying, you know, how do we support national programs that, you know, that are working a little bit more upstream and and uh, trying to establish their own breeding programs. And, and uh, Jean, uh, Jean-Claude, for those programs, as I mentioned at the start, we will continue to support them. So if programs do have an ambition to develop their own breeding program, we will provide uh, support to them. And, and, and we look forward to working with some of those programs as we are doing uh, already. But I'd also like to acknowledge you, Jean-Claude, for the PABRA network that you're running. Um, out of all the different crop networks that we've uh, encountered so far, the PABRA network is probably the closest one um, to the vision that Excellence in Breeding has for effective um, CG NARS breeding network. So uh, thank you for the interaction that we've been having and, and congratulations on, on running such an effective PABRA uh, breeding network. Um,